guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new hi i'm sin and welcome to my channel and in today's video i'm going to be doing another episode of entrepreneur life i believe this is episode nine i'll correct myself if i'm wrong but basically in this video i'm going to be talking about mistakes that small businesses make and also just like mistakes pretty much learning from my own experience and telling you guys those mistakes that i learned were mistakes at the time so before I jump into this video, just to let you guys know, lashes, Shop Sin City, lip gloss, Shop Sin City. I did a brown liner and did my um, lip gloss in the shade Sweetie, which I made more pigmented into like a pinky shade, but it's also mixed with birthday suit. <laughs> so yes, yeah, a little mix in there. And then my hair, Shop Sin City, of course. So yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and jump into this video and also... I did an unboxing of this and also like how I store my business stuff while I'm at school now. So I don't know if this video is going to go out first or after this one. But if it goes out first, I'll make sure I have it tagged in the description box. So I have my notebook here where I wrote down a few things as like I thought about them. So the first thing that I wrote down was showing people your vendor, especially for free, like... Everyone knows I'm against like the buying and selling of vendors because to me it's pointless when it's not that hard to find yourself a vendor. But like just showing your vendor like naively, I think that's the word to use. Like I have a lot of people on my own social media who are also business owners or like, you know, trying to start up their own business and they show like their vendors like some people of course you know they do drop shipping so when they order from their vendor it comes in their vendors packaging and then they send it to their customers like that or they post it before they repackage it showing their vendors information and to me i'm not going to purchase nothing from you if i know your source because i'm just going to go around you like i don't want to shop with a that with a middleman when i know the person that you get it from that's just me me personally a lot of people don't feel the same way but i just feel honestly like that's a big mistake like don't let people know who your vendor is like especially because knowing who how i am if i know who your vendor is and you have really good product like couldn't even be better than mine i don't think nobody's you know stuff is better than mine you gotta have that mindset but just saying then I'm going to go talk to your vendor like, hey, I see that you have really good product. I would like to, you know, get a few just to see for myself. And now we got the same vendor because you gave me your vendor without knowing that. So that's just one thing I say. Don't be showing your vendors for free. Don't be by accident. Like keep everything to yourself. Show stuff once you have like your labels on it and stuff. Like example. I wouldn't show naively my vendor for my lip gloss tubes, even though you can get these anywhere. But I'm not going to personally tell you where to get these. And I'm definitely not going to show you where to get these tubes from because not a lot of people have these tubes. And if I tell you, oh yeah, my vendor name is blah, 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 here's her information, I'm going to see a whole bunch of these tubes pop out. And if you haven't seen my videos about these tubes, I'll put it up in the cards or whatever. But yeah, that's just an example. Like, you don't want to give people your vendors and then they pop out with the same products as you as you, because people shop with you because your stuff is different. So that's just one thing. So the next thing is copying people's logos. Like, I mean, of course, a lot of people can have similar logos because there's only certain types of logos that you can have. You can have an all-word logo which is kind of what I have, but I have like a teeny picture. That's the only difference. Then you have like a cartoon picture logo, which is mainly like a picture. Like your, your main part of your logo is a picture. It can be a cartoon picture, a realistic picture, whatever. That is your logo. Um, And you can also have just like a plain picture. Like you can have an all word logo, a picture in a word logo, and then just a like picture logo. But don't go copying like uh, like when i see your logo i know for a fact where that logo came from like especially if you copying someone who's big because once you decide like you know what i want to take this serious i really want to like do this business thing for real 
you can't use that logo no more and everybody know you by that logo already so it's kind of like you gonna have to sit down and like rethink a whole new logo that's like you know that's just like brand new nobody ever seen before that's why i kept i've i've kept my logo the same if you don't know what my logo looks like i don't have nothing near me right now this is basically what my logo looks like you can't really see it but you see the CNC the beauty and then it has a tagline that says finesse beauty simply and then my picture logo is this little case you can't really see it okay the white part is my logo that is my logo in its entirety when you see that you know it's mine like it's not oh that looks like fashion nova's logo no it looks like mine so you just want to have a logo where when people see it it's like oh i know that this that's such and such or i know that that font that's such and such logo so you know just be creative think of your own thing and if you can't be creative find someone who's creative and pay them to do whatever because if i ever decide to change my logo that's what i'm going to do i'm gonna paste the one to make me something original that i like so the next mistake is having no branding on your products no i say if you send out anything anything it should have your branding it should have your logo your brand your name your whatever on it anything going back to this lip gloss i would not sell this tube of lip gloss clear here it is like i would not send it out like this because there's nothing on it so that means when someone takes a picture of it they not gonna know oh that came from such and such or if somebody like doing a video and they put it on they, where did that come from so I will sell, but I will put on my product like this. As you can see, it has CNC the beauty on it. It's not as big as I want it to be, so the next time I'll try to make it bigger. So you know where you got it from, what's the name of it, all that other good stuff. You do not want to send out products that does not have your logo or anything on it. Because anybody can say they got it from anywhere. Or someone can buy your product because you have a good price on your product and then resell it as their own. Get what I'm saying? Like, just make sure you send us your picture with like your branding. Like, I'll post a picture right here. My friend had came and got some stuff and she took a picture of it. And literally every single thing she had had my logo on it. Whether it was printed on there, it was a sticker, it was a whatever. Like, every last item she had said Sin City Beauty every last one and that's how you want your products to be you don't you do not want to send out a product without a logo i do it sometimes because i've been busy like i have a whole box that i do um wholesale slash like you know good price lashes so it's like i don't want to put a logo on them yet because i might have to send them out as wholesale so that's like the tricky thing so if someone wants to buy some i have to hurry up and put my um my branding on it but i'm gonna work on it do not send no product out with no branding on it. Next thing is customer service. Yeah, customer service can make or break your business, especially being a small business. Like, you kind of got to go, you know, beyond the bigger businesses because you need to build up your trust with your customers so that they can, you know, trust the reasons they want to order from you or whatever. So, like okay especially like if you're selling something that's kind of have a little bit electronic to it so like if i sell one of my lip glosses that have a light to it and my customer be like hey i got the lip gloss but my light doesn't work like can i get another one automatic i'm gonna send you another one with proof but automatic i'm gonna send you another one because that's my fault that's on me i should have checked that before i sent it out i'm not gonna charge you any more any more price I'm not going to tell you, oh, well, that's on you. It worked when it left here. And then I'm going to take care of you so that when you talk to your friends, when other people see you put your lip gloss on and it's lighting up and you're looking in your mirror and they're like, oh, my gosh, girl, where you got that from? You're going to be like, oh, I got it from Sin City Beauty. She, her cooking service is great. Like, if anything's wrong, she's going to make sure you get everything right. Like, you want people to talk really good about your business. So your customer service needs to be A, 
one. Because I'm telling you, especially with me, if your customer service is trash, you ain't worry about me ordering from you. You ain't gonna worry about me telling nobody about your business. None of that. If someone be like, oh, well, you know a good place where I can get A, B, C, and D from? No. Because I don't know a good place. Because the one place that I went to was horrible. So customer service can really make or break your business. Especially if it be a person who has a lot of clout. That says, oh, this business is great. People going to come shop with you because they trust that person. If that person be like, oh, that stuff was trash. Your business is probably going to be dead for like a good week. So just remember that good customer service. Treat your like treat your customers how you want a business to treat you as a customer. Just remember that. So that's about customer service, friendly discounts. I went through it with this one. So it's good, of course, to give. You know, when you first starting out, do discounts because you want you know people to start getting your products, start getting your products out there into the world. You know, sending out PR. I did a video on PR and um brand ambassadors if you guys like to see that but yeah um did a video not did a video you want to do stuff like that but don't keep it going too long because you need to get your like you made you started this business to make a profit and to keep going i mean unless you made the business because you just wanted some extra money not knocking you because when i first started um not my actual business but the process of like buying and reselling it was just to put money in my pocket because I didn't want a real job yet. But if you really like want this to be a business, you're buying this stuff to make a certain amount of profit so that you can get more stuff. So if you're doing a discount, you can't get that certain amount that you need to do something else. You're basically buying product just to sell it to break even. Because that's what's going to happen. Because if you keep doing the discount, you're not going to make a certain amount of profit. You're just going to be making basically what you pay. So that means you're going you're gonna to stay where you at. So I would say, you know, do, I would do discounts for people that's bringing you more stuff. Like if I sell something to my friend at a discount and she's posting it and the next thing you know, I get like three orders off of her. Then of course I'm going to keep letting her get a discount. But if I give you a discount and you don't post you may have like one post just showing the item and that's it. Then more than likely the next time that you shot with me, you're going to pay like full price and that's just that. But like I said, discounts are good. Just don't let them, don't let them use you for the discount. Don't let them run you out. Like don't run out with it. But discounts aren't bad. They just aren't great either. Not testing your vendors. Okay, y'all. So let's backtrack. So this is the month of September. So I think for a year. So now it's been like a good year since I jumped into like the hair selling business or whatever. And when I first started selling hair, it was this vendor that I trusted because when I actually I shopped with them on AliExpress. And I'm not knocking AliExpress vendors because they're good on AliExpress. But wholesale, they, they play. So... I was, um, you know, I wore their hair for like a good year, but off of AliExpress. So I messaged her like, hey, do you sell this hair wholesale? So she sent me a number. I started talking to them or whatever. And the first red flag, well, first thing that should have been a red flag was the names changed. So it wasn't the same person's name that I was talking to AliExpress that I was talking to wholesale. So I get the hair, you know, I do the talking, I order. And if you know my business, I keep all my hair on hand, like everything. So that means I invested a good hunk of change because I kept 12 to 22 inches on hand and straightened by the way. So I invested a, a good chunk of change, me and my mom, into me selling hair to find out after I done invested all that money, by all that hair, I'm selling it, you know, doing good, that the hair was no good after a while. Like, it tangled in the back so bad. Like, after a while of wearing it, it looked, eh. Like, you had to keep cutting it up because the ends just started looking real raggedy. Like, it was horrible. And I didn't want to have a reputation of, like, having that kind of hair. So, I had to hurry up and invest in another vendor to get better hair, which 
I invested in them like little by little just to kind of like test it out and the vendor that I have now like bomb I love their hair I've been working with them for a few months now and she's like she gets my hair out quick my old vendor I had a problem with her I was ordering I was trying to do the drop shipping thing which did not work so I don't do it no more because a girl ordered hair for prom and the hair took like a week and a half to get here and it never takes a week and a half to get here. So that was $200 I had to refund to the girl because she had to get her hair done for prom. So yeah, I had to end up dropping her. So my new vendor, she's the best. She's bomb. And I do not sell my vendors, so do not ask. But bottom line is test your vendors. Like with my new lip gloss tubes, everything is great except for the fact I do have a few. And I am keeping every last one that acts funny. I do have a few where the lights doesn't work automatic like it should if I can get it to to focus on it but like yeah so you have to kind of like tap it to make it work as you can see it's on now so like the ones that do that I am keeping them so that I can let my vendor know how many of them acted funny but I just need to figure out what to do with them because I know I can't get a refund because, you know, I've been using them and stuff. So I'm just trying to think of, like, I should just put these in packages. Because, I mean, the lip gloss inside is still good and you still get a mirror. It's just that your light won't work, like, automatic. Kind of got to play with it. I think I'm just going to start doing that and, like, write a little note. Like, here's the gift. By the way, your light might not work, but here's some free lip gloss. But anyway, so, yeah, just test your products because I think... If I do another order, I'm going to go with another vendor for those. Because it just was a lot. With the light not working, the piece that the stopper is kind of small. So you can't get a lot of gloss at one time. But I mean, I mean, you know, it's still good. It's just a lot of things that I would want changed. So I'm probably going to try another vendor. But next, not separating your business from your personal. And when I say business from personal, I don't mean like relationships none of that i mean your money do not keep your business money in the same bank account as you keep your personal money and i say that because i will be dipping in my business money for personal spending i'll be dipping in my personal money for business spending you just you don't have a clear separation and you need that separation so you know what you're making, what you're losing, you know your profits from your loss. Like you need to keep up with that stuff so that you know. Like next month, I want to invest in this new product, and you want to make sure that what you're investing is what you have. You don't want to say I want to invest four hundred dollars when you really only have three hundred. So that means you won't be taking a hundred out your personal, not knowing it, because it's not separated. So I mean that's not really a big category, but it's like that was a big lesson for me because I didn't have it separate i was trying to keep it like written down and me and like mental mouth don't mix so it was like a lot jumbled up but that's really it from that just try to separate it the first time when i was separating i was keeping all my money on paypal out of my bank account so i would move it from my bank account and put it into my paypal because a lot of people wasn't really going through my own my website at the time there was mainly like in-person sales so it was like a lot of cash out, cash, stuff like that. But now since I have my LLC with my business, I actually have, and I have my EIN and stuff like that, I have an actual bank account at the bank that I use personally. So I have a personal checking account and a business checking account now so I can actually have it like separated. But, and then the last thing is not investing in your business. And when I say not investing in your business, I mean like, Staying the same, like when I first started my business, like way, way back when, when I was like, I said when I first started like, my trapping business, like just doing it to be doing it, all I was selling was lashes. So I've, I'm known mainly for lashes because I've been selling lashes the longest. So if I would have never kept making that money and then seeing that my customer base was growing, it was like, you know what? I want to invest in hair now. I would still be just lashes my business wouldn't have grown to hair get hair business kept growing I only had two textures going to 22 inches 
next investment was I wanted to invest in more hair. Like I wanted to get another texture. Invested in deep wave. Invested in frontals. Invested in a longer length. You know, just keep growing and adding. I invested in lip glosses, lip gloss tubes. I invested in hair pins. I don't have a hair pin in now, but I might put one in for the next video that I'm posting. I mean, I'm recording today, but whatever. Um, you know, just keep investing. So, like, that goes back to, like, keeping up with your money so that you can keep building and investing. You don't want to stay the same because things change. New trends hit. Like, if, like when the trend with the hair pins hit, at first it's just like, okay, I don't want to do that. Like, you know, I don't want to, you know, invest in that. But my vendor, she's the type, like, if she gets a new product, if you buy a lot of hair, she's going to give you free gifts. Like, the first free gift might be, like, some edge brushes, which I also sell. Um, some beauty blenders, which I also sell, but I'm sold out right now. And um, then she started putting in hair pins. So, she sent me maybe, like, two for free. I just put them on my website just to see, you know, what happened. They sold. So, then I invested my money and bought more from her and different words and stuff and those sold i have one left so that means when i get more hair from her i'm gonna let her know hey your hair pins did really good so can i get a few more and i'm gonna just keep selling until that wave die down and then the next wave that come if it deals in the beauty industry then of course i'm gonna try to hop on that wave so that you know when people are looking for especially like at my school i'm the girl to go to because right now i'm like mainly like the, the go-to girl for stuff like that or whatever but yeah, so those are my few mistakes that I could think of like on top of my head that um I made as a small business and that, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys so that you guys don't make the same mistakes. If you guys have any mistakes or any like advice or whatever for me or for the people that watch my videos, comment it down below so that we can all learn from each other. Thank you guys for watching and for supporting me this far. I love you guys and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. This is Sin signing off. Sin, Sin City was a maybe, uh, angels like you.